Hello, and welcome back to RPG Maker MZ. Today we are doing a stepping stone puzzle. Uh, before I get into that, just want to quickly mention I'm going to be using the Lo Fi Girl 24-7 uh, radio program on YouTube for background music in this video. I believe it's uh, artist here and song title here. I'm just going to have that up on screen at all times. And if you like any of the music that you hear, I will have a link to the Lo Fi Girl channel in the description so you can check them out. All right, so before we get into the stepping stone puzzle, let's just quickly demonstrate, or sorry, before we get into the, the implementation, let's just demonstrate what's going on here. So this tutorial will just be using eventing, uh, show you how to do something like this. So resetting puzzle and jumping across rocks. So we'll talk to this guy. Uh, this is from my puzzle collection thing, which I have a playthrough of on my channel. But basically we have the Stepping stones here, if I push push the action button, which is Z, I jump across, and the stone goes away. I cannot, spamming the Z button here, I cannot jump across it a second time. There are also these diagonal rocks, which are a little bit harder to program, but we'll be uh, showing that as well. If I'm facing either of the two orthogonally adjacent tiles here, you can jump across it diagonally like that. Finally, and this is really important for this kind of a puzzle, we do have a reset button. will restore all of the rocks. Restores all the rocks and let's just do this again. And then once we've done all of the rocks, we can talk to the NPC and it'll let us go through. Okay, so that's the kind of thing we're looking at. Um, before we get into that, let's just go over the variables and switches that we'll be using in this tutorial. We need three variables. We have a reset variable, which is used obviously for the reset button. Uh, this could be a switch as well, um, as you'll see. I have it as a variable just so because that particular puzzle that I demonstrated in Garden 4 had two separate puzzles to solve in one room. But if you have your one, your one room only contains one puzzle, you don't need this to be a variable. That's up to you. I have a stone counter, which just tracks how many of these stones we've jumped over, and obviously resetting. We'll also set this to zero. And then Garden Complete, which tracks how many puzzles you've solved. And then our switches, we have a switch for the reset as well. And then for these diagonal ones, they're a little bit more complicated. So we need extra an extra switch for every single diagonal stepping stone that we have in the room. As you can see here, I, I go up to diagonal stepping stone six because I have six of them. Okay, so before setting anything else up, let's just give ourselves a little bit of terrain to work with here. Wrap your on the pencil tool, good. And I believe I was using this set of cobblestones as well. We'll give ourselves something like this. Uh, here's a free eventing thing, you'll see here we have um, this extra grass here. If you don't want that, you can just kind of push shift and get around it that way. Uh, so holding shift while pressing down will, you know, let us do some interesting things with the textures. Anyway, that's probably good for here. We're not going to be making a super complicated puzzle here. We're just going to be setting up like that. Events. So before getting to the stepping stones, I am going to do the reset button first, just because that's nice to have set up in advance. It's an important part of the process. Put this in an out of the way spot. So reset button. And I have everything written out here for the reset button and the control brief, uh, because I don't really consider that to be the main part, the main purpose of the video is to show how to invent the stepping stones. I'll be going through that uh, in more detail, but for these two buttons, I just kind of want to get it, uh, these two events, I just kind of want to get it done. So we're going to start with a conditional branch, making an if statement. Uh, we want a switch, not a, not a variable. Uh, garden complete. So the way this is being used, it says less than current puzzle number. Let's assume that this is the first uh, stepping stone puzzle in our game. 
So we're going to have this be less than one. What this does is once we've completed this puzzle, we'll have garden complete equal to one. And garden complete equals one means that we are not going to be able to reset the puzzle after we've finished it. Once we've finished it, we're done. I think that's probably a good thing to do. Up to you if that's how you wish to do this in your game. Uh, okay. Next we want button press. Uh, I'm going with page up just because I have it explained down here. Uh, reset is on Q. So page up is being pressed. So if the puzzle is not complete and we're pressing the reset button, then we get our reset prompt. Hmm. Show choice, yes, no. Now it's going to look funny if we have the stepping stones just automatically reappear. Um, so let's fade out the screen and then fade it back in when we are done. Fade out screen. I guess we can fade in screen because we'll be doing that at the end as well. And the variable, stone, re uh, stone counter. So this is tracking how many stones we stepped over. Because we're resetting the puzzle, we will set that to zero. Likewise, our reset, we're going to set it to one. This is just telling the game that we are in the middle of resetting the puzzle. And like I said, this could be a switch. Next, we're going to do a transfer player. This is important. And we're not going to bother fading because we're doing the fade out already. But this is important because we don't want to be stuck in the middle of a puzzle and mess around with things um, like by adding the stepping stones back in, we can allow a player to break the puzzle. So by teleporting them out of the puzzle when we reset, it prevents them from doing that. Uh, then we're just going to add a wait just to make sure that everything processes and gets dealt with before we show the screen again. And finally, we are going to tell the game that we are no longer resetting. And then we're going to fade in. And that's all we have to do for the reset button. And when we say no, just do nothing. Second event here, we're going to have the control brief. This is going to tell the player what the controls are. Uh, this is optional, how you want to do this. In my case, it's just going to be when you enter the screen, if the puzzle hasn't been solved yet, then a message will pop up telling you what the controls are. So it's just a reminder if the player leaves and comes back, these are what the controls are for this particular puzzle. So again, uh, not switch. Again, we want variable. Garden complete is greater than or equal to one. This is the first puzzle. So if we are already done the puzzle, then we can erase the event. Where is this one? I can never, never remember where erase, not erase picture. Where is erase event? Here it is. So that's telling the game that we don't need to tell the player what the controls are if the puzzle's already been solved. But if the puzzle hasn't been solved, So if garden complete is oops, less than current puzzle number, then we want to tell them what the controls of the game are going to be. Puzzle controls. Q. If you're using a um, if you're using a plugin or something like that in order to allow rebinding of controls, obviously you're going to have to insert a variable into here for what the current control is. I'm not worried about that for this project, but that is something to keep in mind. So puzzle controls, Q resets the puzzle, and Z jumps across rocks. Excellent. And then we'll just do another erase event here.
All right. So with those two done, uh, let's just set the starting position of our player here. And we have a problem. This is why you test things. So what is going on? Uh, what is wrong here? Well, this one, we don't want to trigger an action. We want this to be an auto run because the thing should pop up immediately. As for this one, the reset button, uh, we'll put that one in parallel. So it's constantly watching for, uh, for us to press the button. New game. So yeah, auto run, the puzzle controls tells us Q and Z. Um, okay, I'm not sure why in my notes I, that's a, that's a thing. It should be uh, an equal, not a hyphen. I don't know why I did that. So if I do you want to restart the puzzle, yes. Fades out, fades in, we're here facing up. Excellent. And because this is not a run, we can do this. We say no. Nothing happens. I don't need to be using a mouse for any of this either. Uh, but it will not pop up the controls until we come back into the game again. Alright. There we are. So, Stepping Stones. This is, of course, the thing that we're actually here to do. So let's get this... Let's get started with this. So I'm just making a, a single tile wide here. Stepping Stone. I do like to name my events. This is optional, but I find it's quite useful to have the tracker on the side here to find them again in the future. So with the stepping stones, we actually have four pages here. Let's create them all in advance. First page is press button to jump. So first we're going to have an image of our stepping stone. And below characters, action buttons is what we want. So if the player is facing this, and hits the action button, then the event will start. And what we want to do here is set self switch A on. I will double check all this to make sure this is working at the end, but I think this is how we're going to want to do things. So switch A is on. That means that we're now going to go to an auto run. And we're going to have the player jump. So what? Do, how do we make the player jump? Uh, transfer player set movement route of the player. We want to set the movement route of the player. But there's going to be four possibilities here. So if we're facing, if we're facing up. We want to jump up. If we're facing down, we want to jump down. The way that this is set up, there's not really any way that we can go from here to the left and here to the right. So I'm just going to have all four of those cases resolved in a single stepping stone so that regardless of whether we're doing an up-down, um, a vertical, or what we're doing a horizontal, left-right, we can just copy the same event. So we're not quite there yet. Um, cancel. Spare changes, yes. Page two, be in the right spot. So we're going to start with a conditional branch. If actor character player is facing down. Okay, that's what we want. And then we'll go in here, movement route. So player is facing down. What do we do in this case? Well, we jump. Offset. So X, uh, X and Y is measured from the top left corner in RPG Maker. So moving down is Y increasing. So we're going to have Y increase by 1. And we're just going to do this twice. So we're going to jump and jump. 
I don't remember if it uses a jump sound effect by default. So let's just quickly test that. We'll set the starting player up here. And this should work. We're going to end up being stuck in a an endless auto run loop here. This is not not ideal. Um Hold on. Ah. Okay, we'll delete those. It was defaulting to a nothing. We'll delete, delete those for now. There we go, we can see our stepping stones. And of course we can just walk across the stepping stone. Hmm, well that's not ideal. That's also not ideal. Okay, all sorts of things are going wrong. In that case... I will set this up the way that I set up the other one. Uh oh. Yeah, so we can't we can't walk across these, but we can walk across that. Well, this is where we go into the old ones and see what's going on here. Priority same as character, that's probably what I needed to do here. Same as character, okay. Troubleshooting is an important part of the programming process. Same as character, okay. We can no longer jump across it, so I guess I didn't need to set this. I could probably still use the grass. We'll test it out with a stepping stone here. I'll duplicate this to copy it here once uh, this thing's done. Okay, so no sound, and we keep jumping infinitely. Not what we want. I was just trying to test the sound. So we're gonna play a sound effect. I believe there is a jump sound effect in the game by default. Uh, jump one. Sure, go with that. And we'll do that. So we jump twice. We don't want to be running, so this is set to auto run, but we don't want it to keep doing this forever and ever. So once we're done, we're going to Remove the stepping stone. The best, uh, easiest way to do that is set self switch B. B is now active. And self switch B, we have nothing. So if B is active, we can't press our button. There's just nothing happens. Okay. So we'll test this again, just make sure that everything is working as we intend it to. So yeah, can't run across. I get that, I've jumped twice. It is now gone if I hit, well, I haven't programmed it to go up, but um, it's no longer there. All right, so I think we have this working. So now what we wanna do is copy, and we're just gonna paste this for every other direction. Player is facing left, player is facing right, players facing up. This part can be a little bit tedious at this point. So it was left. Yes, we are facing to the left. That means that X is getting lower. So X is down. If 
facing to the right. X is getting bigger. And finally, facing up means that we are going in the negative y direction. Y, okay. Save changes. Yes, we're going to make sure this is still working. We didn't break anything. No, good. Um, okay, let's... Well, reset is super easy. So let's just do a reset on here. And then we'll test it, because once we reset, we should teleport beneath it, so we can jump up the other way to test it that way. All right, so for the reset, all we're doing is we're looking for the variable is reset greater than or equal to one. Have we told the game to reset? If yes, we're going to auto run this. And we're just going to turn off self switch A and B. And with A and B off, reset will be 1 for 12 frames, and then it'll go back down to 0, so we'll no longer be on this event page. And with A and B off, those will both be reset, and we'll be back here. So this is why we wanted to set up the reset first, just to make sure that this is going to work. And I guess this is the first time we can really test that the reset is doing what it's supposed to do. All right. We jump. Good, it's gone. Do you want to reset the puzzle? Yes. Look at that. Teleported. And it's back. Does going up work? It does. Works as expected. Excellent. And I guess this is a, a bit of water here. So we can just test it here. Make sure left right is also working. There we go. Yes, we'll reset, and then we'll come around this way. Yeah, again, can't do it again. Everything seems to be working. All right. Now, there is one more thing that I want to do here, because part of my plan here is to track how many stepping stones we have stepped over. So to do that, we're going to control variable, stone counter, we're going to add one. So no matter which way we jump across it, we add one to the stone counter, saying yes, we have jumped across it. And if we look at the reset, you can see stone counter goes back to zero. So that's an internal tracking thing that's just going to check. And we'll do something with that at the end here. Okay, so that is the orthogonal stepping stone done. You can go up and down, and we can go left and right. But what if we want to do one of these diagonal stepping stones? The reason you might want a diagonal stepping stone, the entire reason why I implemented this, is because if you look at any of these, these are really easy to solve. Uh, the theory behind how this puzzle works is not very hard, because we have, let's take this island, we have two stepping stones. That means that this stepping stone, we either come from here to here, or from here to here. And this stepping stone is either here to here, or here to here. Which seems obvious, but the reason that the diagonals make it a lot harder, if we look at this one, is that suddenly we have a choice, because this stepping stone now can be from here to here, here to here, or here to here, and here to here. So the way you solve these kinds of puzzles is that you basically take your starting position here, we start here, well, let's just use this, the small one here. So we start here, and we want to end here, which means we need an even number of stepping stones. So we know that we have one here that we have to use from here, but this one can be from here or from here. So to make sure that we have an even number of stepping stones leading to this island, we know that this one ends up having to be here, which means this one, if we look at it, it's odd. One, two, three. But if we jump here, then we have two left, and we don't want to end here, which means that we want an odd number connected. If we want to end here, we want an even number, which is two. So we could go around and end back here, but we don't want to end here. So we want an odd number. So we go one, because this one has to be connected. 
which means that this one cannot be connected to this. If we do this, we lose. So these diagonals make this puzzle a lot more complicated and a lot more interesting. However, programming them is also kind of a pain. So let's put, uh, let's just change our terrain slightly. There we go. So now we can put a diagonal stepping stone here. So let's do that. Uh, diagonal stepping stone, I'm just going to call it DSS1. Uh, there's a reason I'm putting a number on this. And this actually is simpler as an event on its own. So again, we're just going to grab the stepping stone tile. Uh, same as characters, just so we can't run across it. And the first page just displays it. And a new page is going to be with this thing removed. And the way that we're going to do this is that we're going to have a separate DS stone switch for every single diagonal stepping stone in our room. In this case, these first six refer to the previous room. Um, you're going to have to like the way I've implemented this, we're actually going to have to create a new one because this is a new room. So we'll say this is DS Stone. Uh, we'll just go 1 1. Because we want this to be a unique switch for this specific stepping stone. It can't be shared by any other stepping stone in the entire game. So yeah, we'll call this 1 1. So that if we're using these in multiple rooms, then we can do 1 2 for a step, the first stone in room two or something like that. So page one, we have our stepping stone. Page two, we have our stepping stone switch on and the stone is gone. Uh, I hit cancel, it shouldn't matter because I hit apply first. Okay. So now we're going to need DSS1-1 and uh, we'll call this north. So this is our diagonal stepping stone helper. This is the one that is north of it. And this is going to be largely the same as our regular stepping stone here. So we're going to have action button. Uh, action button will activate it, and all this does is set self switch A on. Then, if self switch A is on, we're going to have our auto run. This is our jump event. And this is going to be uh, a little bit more complicated. So here, we don't want all four directions. We actually only want the two. So this one works if you're facing left or facing right. Uh, so conditional branch. Character is facing left. If that's the case, then we're going to set our movement route. And this is going to be sound effect again. Okay. Jump. And we are facing to the left. This means facing to the left and we are on the north side. So we're going to be jumping diagonally down like this. So that means X goes down and Y goes up. So X goes down. Uh, y goes... Why is that thing popping up? Y goes up. Okay. So X goes down, Y goes up. And then we're just going to copy both of those. Now there's a preview button here. This is pretty nice. Uh, this is new to uh, MZ, I believe. MZ. So it shows you where you are and jumping this way. Now, we know that the player is going to be here in this case, so it'll jump that way. Um, it doesn't track where the player is in the preview, it just shows based on the current event location. But there we are. 
So that is facing left, and that's oh, that's all we wanted to do. Copy, paste. We're facing right. It's going to be the same thing, except that this time, y is still going up, but x is also going up. Which again, preview that. So yeah, that's the diagonal that we want. So this should be working for, well, let's just test it, for the jump. Do our little sanity check here. So if we're facing this way, uh, it's not working. Okay, well, this is why we check. Why is it not working? Players facing to the left, they should jump. We need to be same as characters so that we can hit the button. I hope this is the problem, because if it's not, okay, there we go. Ah. And now we're stuck in a in an auto run event, so we can't move. So a couple of things went wrong there. First of all, we appeared above. Um. Above this. So we're going to priority below characters. That should fix that. Yes, okay. Now let's fix the game freezing endlessly once we do the jump. So that's going to be new event page. We're going to go to three. Actually, before we do that, we need to do a few things here. First, we're going to control variable, stone counter. Let's just add one because this is something that we want to do. So we've jumped across one and then self switch and we're going to go to B. And this is going to be the same as before. Here if B is active. We've removed the stepping stone so it's no longer doing anything. It's also importantly no longer on auto run. This will fix the game freezing after we do it. Because if you have an auto run, the game cannot process anything until the auto run is complete. So anytime you're running an auto run trigger event, you need to have some way of switching off that event page. So we'll go here. Control B. Ah, uh, not Control B. Um, self switch B. And from here, okay, good. We've jumped, and it no longer works because we don't want it to work. Yeah, perfect. That is exactly as expected, because we're now here, which does not check if the player is doing anything. In fact, priority below characters, so that means even if we hit a button, nothing would happen. But if something did happen, it wouldn't matter because there's no control here. Nothing happens. And then finally, new event page. And this is going to be when... Uh, not when that one is done, sorry, we want the variable reset. If reset is greater than or equal to 1, then we run the reset, and with reset, the same thing as before, we're going to want to get rid of these self switches. So control self switch A, off, and B to off. Alright, and with that, we should have That uh, is not disappearing. Interesting. Yes, we want to reset the puzzle. And it's not working. Okay, so something's going wrong here. So with reset, control self switch A. That should put us back to here. Ah, silly me. This has to be an auto run again. Yep because we want this to automatically go, and then it's going to change some switches, reset after 12 frames, we'll go back to zero, so we won't be stuck on this forever. And it's the same thing we did here, right? We set this data run on the reset? Yes, okay. So it might look like progress is slow here, but we are very close to having something that works. And yeah, it does not work again. But if we reset the puzzle, 
And since we did do left and right, it should work from this side as well. Yep, perfect. Okay, everything is good. So now, how do we make this go away? Now we have this DS Stone 1-1 one -one here. So when we jump on here, we're actually going to add another control switch, DSS Stone 1-1. One -one. We're going to turn that on. And just confirm that that's doing what you want it to do. The reason I test this um, this frequently is because every time you make a single change to your code, there's a chance that something unexpected will happen. There's a chance that something will go wrong. If something goes wrong and you don't immediately test and figure out that there's something going wrong, you could end up with a world of hurt later when you're trying to find where where things went wrong. If you've already done you know eight, ten, twelve changes, good. Then it'll be hard to to find out what exactly is causing the problem. Okay, see, so yeah, that's what that was what that's what I was expecting to have happen here. So we fix this. We can actually still jump. The stone's still there, but it's disappeared. So how do we fix this? Like every time we reset, this code still this code reactivates, but this doesn't reappear. So now we have to go back to our reset button. And here, when we're doing this reset, inside this sequence maybe right before transfer player, we're going to control switch DS stone one, diagonal stepping stone one, off. And again, task right away. So what that should do is that should reset the stepping stone, thinking that it should be gone when we do a reset. And there it is. Jump again, disappears. Reset again. Back. Okay, beautiful. So we have our stepping stone working. Now for the tedious part. We have this event. But we can only activate it from here facing left and here facing right. So let's just paste this three more times. This one is going to be... Uh, this, let's see, this will be to the west. This one is east, and this one is south. And we have to go into all of these and check here. So this one, we want if the player is facing up or down. Instead of left, we'll go down, and instead of right, we'll go up. And then we need to change the variables appropriately. So if we're facing down, then we're going to be going uh, bottom right. So that would be plus and plus. And here, if we're facing up, then we're going top right. So that would be minus y, but positive x. So positive x. Um, equal minus y. Uh, is there anything else I need to change here? Let's just double check this. I think everything else doesn't matter. I think it's just page two with the move routes that we need to change. So this one, same deal. If we're facing down, then we want uh, facing down will be bottom left, which will be minus x and positive y. Minus x, positive y. Okay, that's the same. And here, up, and that will be minus minus. Yeah, minus minus. And finally, uh, we want to be facing left and right again. So if we're facing to the left, then we're going, oh, minus minus, we just did that. And 
facing to the right, then we want positive x but minus y. Minus y. All right, you know what time it is. Time to test that we have every single orientation of every single one of these events working properly. It's very important to do. So that one worked as expected. Then we'll jump here and we'll do that way. Okay, worked as expected. Up, worked as expected. Left, worked as expected. Okay, looks good. And then two more. I guess we've already tested this one, but it's fine. That was to the right, and then down. Okay, looks like everything is working. So with that, we have our diagonal stepping stone done. So that is basically everything that we need to do here in order to have our stepping stones actually work as a puzzle. As a puzzle. Now, one thing to note with this, um, the way that this is set up, we cannot have a stepping stone, a regular stepping stone, like I can't move it into that, into this tile. This tile has to be reserved for a diagonal. So if you have a diagonal, all four orthogonally adjacent squares must be clear. You can't have stepping stones next to each other. However, for these, I can't have those next to each other. That's not a problem. So let's just add a few more, just for the sake of uh, showing off what we're doing here just a little bit. Um, I don't want to make too big of a puzzle, but I will make one more diagonal just to kind of show how that works. So yeah, we'll, do, we'll do it with this one here. Let's modify the terrain a little bit. And uh, I guess another issue with the diagonals is that you can't have um, something like this would be really bad if I, if I put a diagonal. So let's do that. If I put this diagonal right here, this is a problem because if you're here and you try to jump, you're going to end up in water. And likewise, having this available is not good because we can try to do an orthogonal, an orthogonal jump across, which will not work. Uh, you could you could put the move code of this into this, I guess, if you wanted orthogonals and diagonals on the same stepping stone. But uh, I don't particularly want to do that, so I'm not going to. So instead, what we're going to do here is so we're just going to do something like that. And that way this is only possible as a diagonal from here, but it does give us an example of of another diagonal. And this is again a problem because we don't have like we could end up in the water. So let's just quickly fix that by making those like that. Uh, and this is why in here I ended up just doing these without any grass at all. Because I don't think this looks very good having all these little narrow channels. But that's personal preference. So we have our little diagonal set up here. This should work. So we're gonna have to copy these. The reason I wanted to include a second diagonal here, let's just do that, is to demonstrate an issue that comes up with copying these. These are not easily copyable. So this is now one, two. And we're going to have to we're going to have to do another one of these. Uh, you don't have to bother with all of this name changing stuff if you don't want to. For these, if you come up with a generic name for these helpers, that's fine. I'm just going to do it. it doesn't take too long. And. Then in here, we also have to change this, one, two. I think that's the only thing in here we need to change. 
because we don't reference that switch on any of these condition pages. Okay. Yep, so we just have to go in here. One, two. And in here. One, two. And finally here. I'll double click that. Space for that one. One, two. And finally, we need to add Stepping Stone 2 disabled here. All right, so if I've done everything correctly, and I could be brave and not test it. So yeah, let's be brave and not test it and hope that nothing goes wrong. It's a terrible idea. You shouldn't do this, but I'm going to. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we have six Stepping Stones is puzzle complete. So now, uh, we have a cliff. Sure. That's uh, oh, that's a snow cliff. Where is where is grass cliff? Is there no grass cliff? Okay. Well, we're gonna use a we're gonna use a stone wall. And we'll just do this. Here, we'll do the same thing. Like that. All right, event. Quick event creation treasure. Quick event creation door. Uh, that location. Oh, okay, that's not what we want to do. Quick event creation. You know what? Let's just let's just build this one. Uh, this is gonna be puzzle door. Uh, not sci-fi. We want just regular door, probably. Sure, we'll use one of these. Same as characters, action buttons, so it's just a barrier. And new event page, and we'll just get rid of it. I'm not going to bother animating it for this, that's not the point of this tutorial. Uh, so we're just going to go in here and variable, which is uh, garden complete, greater than or equal to one. Okay. So if we complete the puzzle, it'll go away. Finally, I actually, you know what, rather than have an extra NPC and an extra, extra step, well, yeah, okay, we'll just have, we'll just create a new event here that does an auto run. And what this is going to do is it's going to auto run if stepping stone, uh, stone counter equals, was it six? One, two, three, four, five, six, yes. This is puzzle complete. I equal six, and it's an auto run only in that case. And if it auto runs, then what it does is it sets our variable garden complete to one. This is saying we've solved the puzzle, which should open the door. And then here, if garden complete is greater than or equal to one, just do nothing. And this is not on auto run. Okay. So if everything is going correct, correctly, what I've just set up should uh, erase this door and give us access to the treasure chest once we've stepped on all of the, once we've stepped on everything. Three, four, five. Okay, that one works. Uh, let's reset the puzzle just to make sure that the stone counter is working properly. Two, three, four, five. Whoops, that's a problem. Okay, well, um, this is why you probably want an NPC instead of an auto run because I was going to get myself trapped if I had jumped there. So have an NPC that you report your quest into, I guess. And there we go. Puzzle's done. 
And we found zero gold. Excellent. All right, so that is a way you can use stepping stones uh, in your own games. Hopefully this was helpful, and uh, next week I will try to have a tutorial done for the block pushing puzzle, which is another pretty simple staple of these kinds of games. I will see you then.